Yeah, I suck at this game. Yu-Gi-Oh! One of the three pillars of card games alongside Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. People actually played this? Yu-Gi-Oh! is a series that has evolved from a broken mess into the expensive, competitive, heavy children's card game we grown adults love today. Well, it's more like a love-hate kind of relationship. Emphasis on the hate. Created by the late Kazuki Takahashi, this was a manga series that went from a young timid boy harboring an evil spirit in an episodic dark gambling fantasy to a mega billion dollar franchise about teens saving the world with trading cards. That was the best decision he ever made. Duelist Kingdom, the first arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! Known for its crazy, made-up playground rules, making it that much harder for us kids to understand what was going on. So today, I'm gonna show you just why we love this show about shiny cardboard and ancient Egyptian evil magic so much. So take a trip to Egypt, put on your nostalgia goggles, and come to the realization that your favorite deck just isn't good as we take a cruise to Duelist Kingdom. The birth of the king. It's time to do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's just how it goes. Our story starts off like any other. A couple of nerds play a card game while everybody else has a life. Introducing our main characters, Yugi and Jonochi. Oh, right, English version. Yugi and Joey are playing a card game known as Duel Monsters. The goal is to summon monsters to reduce your points' life points to zero. Yeah, so it's actually called Duel Monsters, but I mean, if you ever hear anyone actually call it that, they deserve to be sent to the Shadow Realm immediately. After Yugi whoops Joey's ass 50 to 0, the gang go to see Yugi's grandpa, who owns a game shop, in hopes of pulling a first edition Dark Magician. Their visit is cut short, as the self-absorbed, richest, dragon horny, screw the rules douchebag shows himself. Introducing Seto Kaiba, the best character in the entire franchise. Kaiba notices Grandpa has a very rare blue eyes, and is shocked he won't trade it for a pile of garbage. Really? A flame Cerberus? I'll take nine. Kaiba throws a hissy fit and leaves. The next day, after school, Yugi is expecting a booty call, but it's actually Seto Kaiba. Unless... Kaiba tells him that he's taken Grandpa hostage, and the gang go to square up with the discount Richie Rich. They find a broken down Solomon, who just lost to Kaiba. And look at the sweet prize I won. Uh, guys, it's fine. You can just buy another one on TCG Player for like a dollar. Yugi duels Kaiba using Grandpa's deck to show him that this game isn't pay to win. His balls drop and the duel begins. For most of the duel, Kaiba has the advantage, summoning powerful monsters as Yugi realizes that Grandpa's deck actually sucks. This card is useless. Oh, no, 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 no. Things seem to look grim for our spiky haired protagonist, but by the luck of the draw, Yugi assembles all five pieces of existence. Zodia giving him the automatic win. Ah! First episode and Yugi just killed a guy. <laughs> this anime is awesome! After managing to shake off the police for three days, the gang are at home watching the finals between Rex and Weevil. Oh, and Raptor plays the strongest card in his deck! Looks like this match could be over right here, right now! 1600 attack. That's the strongest card in your deck. Dancing <gasps> Fairy is a better card. Grandpa tells Yugi that he has a package from Industrial Illusions, the makers of Duel Monsters. They pop in the tape to see what it's all about. Surprised to see me? Do you like this, sir, huh? Hmm. I've been looking for you, Joey. <sighs> the things I do for content. The video contains a recording from Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of Duel Monsters. Don't call it that! Pegasus invites Mr. Yu-Gi-Oh over here to Duelist Kingdom, the greatest Duel Monsters tournament to decide the king of games. As an incentive, Pegasus takes Yugi and his friends into a dark realm known as a shadow game to test his abilities. The duel begins and everything seems to be going fine, but with the Millennium Eye, Pegasus is able to tell the exact cards Yugi is about to play and perfectly counter it. Hey judge, he's invoking the dark elements of ancient Egyptian magic to see the cards in my hand. Yes, the Celtic Guardian! 
Take a bet on how many L's you think Celtic Guardian will have by the end of this video. The timer runs out before Yugi is able to swing for game. Pegasus wins, and just because he is a major asshole, he takes Grandpa Soul hostage. If Yugi wants his grandpa back, he must beat Pegasus at Duelist Kingdom. The next day, Joey gets a message from his sister Serenity, who is on a career path to being blind unless Joey can find enough money for the operation. Yugi informs Joey that Duelist Kingdom isn't just for bragging rights. The winner will receive a cash prize of three million dollars. I'm sorry, a uh, cash prize? In Yu-Gi-Oh? I went to YCS Pasadena. And I probably spent that much just to get my ass beat to... Oh, yeah. uh -oh. With their goals set, the boys head off to the boat for the tournament. They encounter what everybody thinks people who play this game look like, Weevil Underwood. In awe at Yugi's victory to Kaiba, Weevil checks out the pieces to Exodia and pulls the biggest prank imaginable. Say goodbye to Exodia! <laughs> They fail to recover all the pieces, but as thanks for trying, Yugi gives Joey a time wizard. Once everybody arrives on the island, Pegasus explains the basic rules. Everyone duels each other on the island in a battle royale style. You start with two star chips, and the first few to collect 10 in two days can get into Pegasus's castle for the chance to duel him for the prize money and the title of King of Games. The games are off. Yugi sets his sights on Weevil and they duel. Now in the anime, they have those giant duel terminals with amazing visuals and animations. But in the manga, they just kind of sit in a room and duel on a table. Fucking caveman, I know. During the duel, Weevil uses a lot of cheap tricks to try and mess Yugi up. Like the field power bonus, which can give monsters 30% more attack. Or how equip spells just straight up don't work. Okay. Yugi uses Pokemon rules to beat Weevil and kick him out of the tournament. He now has three star chips. Next up is our boy Wonder Joey. They scout around and end up in a random encounter with My Valentine. My challenges Joey to a duel in hopes of getting an easy win. Before they duel, Joey asks why she's in this tournament. My says she just wants to win money to buy all the things she's ever wanted. <laughs> so that's why you want the prize money? How selfish. All right, Joey, go fuck yourself, dude. I'm sorry not all of us have a dying grandpa or a sister who doesn't know what the fuck the color blue is. Mai uses some weird trick to tell what her cards are without looking. Joey realizes that Mai sprayed all her cards with perfume and pretends she's psychic to freak out her opponents. Ugh, smells like cinnamon. Must be called by the grave. Not like it matters though, as Mai still kicks Joey's ass in this game. But with a small pep talk from Yugi, Joey wins the match. Moving on, the gang are starving and look for some food alone in the wilderness. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up that Pegasus just put a bunch of random teens and young adults on an island and expect them to survive for 48 hours. They find some food, but then get a surprise welcome from Freaky Fish Guy, who has a deep love for the ocean. Freaky Fish Guy challenges Yugi to a duel. As you can probably guess, he uses water monsters, and because this is Duelist Kingdom, they have the stupid ability of being able to hide underwater. Yugi goes leaps and bounds beyond logic by having the Soldier of Stone destroy the moon. What? Giving him the win. A moment so ridiculous they even made a card about it. Is it good? Not even a little bit. Yugi is on a roll with five star chips. They run into some random goopy goblin who wants to duel Yugi. The goblin is probably one of the worst duelists in the entire franchise, which means that it can only be Mokuba! Mokuba was captured by Pegasus as his plan to rule over Kaiba Corp. Mokuba wants to stop Pegasus and defeat Yugi for beating his brother. Yugi decides to help, but in five minutes record time, Mokuba gets captured. The guard tells Yugi that if they want to save Mokuba, they must duel Seto Kaiba, but evil. <laughs> Speaking of Kaiba, wait, what? He sneaks into the house that's been heavily guarded to watch the Duelist Kingdom live stream. Yugi and Kaiba, but evil, are in the middle of dueling. Yugi is struggling against a single blue eyes, and so Seto decides to help him out by slamming a satellite into a building, killing hundreds of Pegasus's employees. This duel shows that the only way to beat a blue eyes is to hack into a government system. Upset by the BS rules of Duelist Kingdom, Kaiba, but 
but evil reveals his true form. Now you see, the thing with four kids is that they've done a lot of censorship to Yu-Gi-Oh and other anime here in the West. In the original, this was actually supposed to be a master impersonator that just pretended to be Kaiba. But in the four kids version, it's Kaiba's evil spirit that Yugi separated back in episode one. With the power of friendship, Yugi combines the powers of the mystic elf and blue eyes, which is a real card now, by the way, to beat Kaiba, but evil. Even though they won, Mokuba is missing. What else is new? Joey looks for his next victim. Mai arrives to sick her simps onto Wheeler. Next up is Rex Raptor, the Dino Duelist. The duel begins and Joey gets what he considers a good hand, hoping to use the same combos from his match with Mai. Defense mode! But I didn't get to play my combo. Through sheer luck, Joey is able to get the upper hand, but then Rex plays his true ace, the Red Eyes Black Dragon. Rex makes a bet. Whoever wins gets the opponent's rarest card, Raptor's Red Eyes for Wheeler's Time Wizard. Speaking of which, Joey plays Time Wizard and just wins the duel, along with two more star chips, putting him at four. Later at night, they continue looking for food, but Mai stops by to share. They set up camp and just vibe for a while. Mai goes off to get kidnapped and Bakura. One of Yugi's friends just randomly appears to say hi. Bakura offers a friendly duel that quickly becomes not so friendly. Turns out an evil spirit has taken over Bakura and wants Yugi's millennium puzzle for himself. A duel of darkness commences. Everyone becomes their favorite card, and if they get sent to the graveyard, risk being trapped forever. Yummy Bakura plays Change of Heart in hopes of winning the duel, but since it's Bakura's favorite card, he's able to take control and help Yugi win the duel. Well, that was a wacky turn of events. It's a good thing that Bakura is back to normal and will never be possessed ever again. Back to Mai, the group hears a bunch of screaming and goes to check it out. They arrive to see Mai has lost to panic one of Pegasus's elite eliminators. He challenges Yugi to a duel, and if he loses, we'll get all his star chips taken, just like with Mai. <laughs> it's okay, guys. As long as your cards are sleeved, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Just like with Freaky Fish Guy, Panic uses the darkness to stop Yugi from seeing his cards. Celtic Garden! <laughs> However, our main protagonist has the ultimate poker face. After dispelling the darkness with Swords of Revealing Light, even though that's not at all what it does, he uses the Dragon Champion to destroy the castle and win the duel. After adding another fool to his body count, Yugi gives back my star chips and they continue on. Meanwhile, Kaiba is on his way to Duelist Kingdom. Now, they don't show this, but in the manga, Kaiba actually hijacked that plane after he threatened to kill everybody on board. Card games are no joke, ladies and gentlemen. Kaiba meets up with Yugi and his friends. He tells everyone that he plans to defeat Pegasus with his new dual disc system. Joey is upset at the lack of relevancy and wants to duel Kaiba. No, I lost. Color me surprised. Before Kaiba leaves, he mentions a story about how Pegasus won a tournament without even needing to play. Could you imagine a basketball stadium just full of fans dedicated to watching a single game of Yu-Gi-Oh on like a regular sized table. And if no monsters on the field, I summon Dark Magician and swing for game. The next day, Joey wakes up from a dummy mommy fetish dream and is determined to win some star chips. Luckily for him, he gets jumped by some goons. They take him to some underground lair where he'll duel Bones, the zombie duelist. Next to him is Bandit Keith, a strong duelist who was the guy from Kaiba's flashback earlier. Nothing new, but Joey is struggling. Thanks to Call of the Haunted and Pumpkin King, none of Bones' monsters can be destroyed and just keep reviving to be even stronger stronger than his red eyes. Meanwhile, the gang enter the cave looking for Joey. I'm gonna try! Ah! Yugi and Ko arrive, and with a simple pep talk, Joey wins the duel and now has eight star chips. But unfortunately, the goons trap them inside the cave and Bandit Keith goes on to Pegasus's castle. However, Bakura is able to use his Millennium Ring to show themselves out of the cave and come across a duel arena. Introducing the Paradox Brothers, who've been ordered by Pegasus to destroy the others. They give them a question. If they can choose which door leads to the outside, then they will be free to 
look at the ocean tide. Joey believes he remembers this riddle and answers with a confident giggle. Oh, thank God we're done. Because I was about to shoot myself with a gun. I hate to disappoint you, Joey, but I don't think we've solved this riddle just yet. And so begins the tag team duel. Para and Dox use their teamwork to outplay Yugi and Joey in the maze room. But Yugi and Joey have a few tricks up their sleeves too. No! All hope seems lost as the brothers summon the gate guardian, able to do all kinds of crazy horseshit that's not at all written on the card. But Yugi and Joey have their own ultimate combo with the red eyes black skull dragon, which gives them the victory. Yugi realizes that neither brother was telling the truth and are able to take the correct door outside the castle. With both duelists holding 10 starships, they're ready for Pegasus's castle. The gang make it up the castle, but oh shit, whoops, it's Kaiba's bitch ass again. Kaiba challenges Yugi to a duel, telling him that Pegasus has captured Mokuba's soul, and if he wants to get it back, Seto must defeat Yugi in a duel. The two battle using Kaiba's new duel frisbees. Basically, you place your monster in the center of the frisbee and the rest of your hand around it to use during the duel. I did it! The Sword Stalker gathers the life force of a fallen ally, raising his own attack power by 20%. Right here, I have a copy of Sword Stalker, a level 6, 1 tribute Dark Warrior vanilla monster whose card text reads, A monster formed by the vengeful souls of those who passed away in battle. That's weird. Says nothing about gaining attack. <laughs> Almost like that's not what it fucking does. Yugi is able to quickly learn how this new system works, but Kaiba has the advantage, destroying Yugi's deck with Crush Virus and summoning the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The only way for Yugi to win is to come up with some random bullshit, which he does! Multiply now makes infinite Karibos, and apparently Mammoth Graveyard can just infect your monsters. Who knew? Kaiba does what I should have done at the start of this video. Desperate to get his brother back, Seto threatens to jump off if he loses. That is, unless you have the courage to unleash your attack! Um, okay. I, I summon Beaver Warrior in attack mode. I'll, I'll attack. Like a true duelist, Yugi will do anything to make sure his opponent has a terrible time playing this game. He summons Celtic Guardian and prepares to end the duel. Well, that was a huge misplay. But our boy doesn't have the heart and stops the attack. Blue Eyes shoots a white lightning and wins the duel. Then Kaiba heads up to Pegasus's castle. Yugi swears that he'll never duel ever again. Mai shows up to see Yugi all upset and tries to get him to toughen up. I'll duel you! That's right! Nope, nah, -uh, we are not doing that. Mai gives Yugi some extra star chips and he gets out of his 30 minute depression phase. Then they enter Pegasus's castle. They meet up with Bandit Keith to watch Kaiba duel Pegasus for his brother's soul. Just like all his previous duels, Pegasus is able to see every card Kaiba has and come up with the perfect counter to it, which also means he's top decking like crazy. Pegasus unveils his deck's true strategy, Toon World, a deck full of goofy cartoon characters that can't be destroyed as long as Toon World is in play. He even turns the man's kink into one of his sick cartoons. Eventually, Kaiba is overwhelmed by Pegasus and loses the duel along with his soul. Yugi swears that he will defeat Pegasus and rescue everyone, but first, he must win the semi-finals. Ignoring the trauma of a man's soul literally being sucked out of his body, we've entered the semi-finals. Yugi vs. Mai, and Joey vs. Bandit Keith. Yugi vs. Mai begins. This time, Mai is determined to give it everything she has by using the exact same strategy of summoning Harpy Lady. Oh, and a dragon. Now she has two monsters. Yugi's focus is a little bit dodgy, as all the pressure of a children's card game is just too much for him. Mai helps him remember why he's dueling, and Yugi, with the brickiest deck you've ever seen, summons the Black Luster Soldier for the one and only time and wins the duel. Next up is Joey versus Bandit Keith. They come up to the arena and duel. No other weird shenanigans. They just duel. Yep. Bandit Keith uses a machine deck, powerful man-made creations that are immune to magic attacks. Well, I mean, yeah, machine monsters are resistant to magic attacks. Everybody knows that. You've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for how long and you didn't even know that? 
Do you even duel my guy? Slowly but surely, Wheeler is able to outsmart Bandit Keith, who tries cheating. It doesn't work, and Joey wins. Upset by the loss, Bandit Keith points at Pegasus. Would have been a lot more intimidating if it was like a gun. But gets ejected out of Duelist Kingdom. Our final match is Yugi versus Joey. The winner gets the prize money and the chance to duel Pegasus. Congratulations, Duelist. You're the finest in the world. Oh man, the bar was a low in the 90s. The duel begins. Yugi summons Celtic Guard. <laughs> when will he learn? Joey uses Time Wizard, which accidentally gives Yugi the win. Sorry, Joey, but hey, at least your sister won't be able to see how much you suck at this game. But Yugi lets Joey have the prize money for Serendi's operation. Cause being good at card games is way more important than financial stability. The time has come. The final battle between Yugi and Pegasus. Whoever wins will become the king of games. As usual, Pegasus' top decking skills and Millennium Cheat Code magic are too much for Yugi and his deck that makes no sense. What is it? Master Pegasus! Master Pegasus! Turn on the TV! They hit the Pentagon! They hit the fucking Pentagon! Master Pegasus is currently dueling! Pegasus invokes the powers of Toon World, giving his monsters a new coat of paint and other wacky abilities. <laughs> Even turning the Summon Skull into a beefed up OC Tumblr fan art character. If Yugi wants to win, he needs to find some way to destroy the invincible Toon World. Mystical Space Typhoon, Twin Twister, Lightning Storm, Dust Tornado, Magic Jammer, Harpy's Feather Duster, or hell, I don't know, D-Spell maybe? To counter the Millennium Eye, the two Yugis, holy shit, there's two of them? The two Yugis come up with the Mind Shuffle, switching back and forth so Pegasus can't tell the other Yugi's strategy. Thanks to this, Pegasus now has to actually play the game. Which proves he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh just like the rest of us. As his final resort, Pegasus takes the two Yugis into the Shadow Realm once more. Little Yugi is afraid of the dark, so he taps out for the rest of the game. Pegasus summons his ace monster, relinquished, to take control of his monsters. Not all hope is lost, however, as with the power of friendship, Yugi's friends cock block Pegasus from seeing his hand. Yugi invokes the powers of the Darker Magician and wins the duel and is now crowned the King of Games. Staying true to his word, Pegasus releases the souls of Solomon, Seto, and Mokuba. His true objective was to bring back his dead wife Cecilia by using Kaiba's money and the Millennium Items. But that plan double fails as Yami Bakura shows up and kills the dude for his Millennium Eye. Before the gang leave, Yugi gets a surprise visit from Shadi, the holder of the Millennium Key, to be continued. And that's the end of Duelist Kingdom, the beginning of the weirdest and greatest convoluted card game we've ever seen. While this season is definitely near and dear to my heart, I kinda have to be honest, it's really not that great and mostly just nostalgia. But I think this series and Kazuki Takahashi's vision for creating a one-of-a-kind game and series that many of us, myself included, still love today. To end this video, I have an exact replica of Yugi's deck. The king of games is right at the palm of my hands. With this, I will never lose every- This game fucking sucks.